I'm actually, uh, I'm a uh, 57 years old, young. I've got a, uh, a wonderful wife. I have two wonderful children. One of my most favorite hobby, which is a passion, is maple syrup tapping, sugaring. I guess is the expression they, they use. We would love to put him in a little box. Don't do that, and you can't do this, but we couldn't do that to him. He's a free spirit. He loves life. Two years ago, um, I had a huge rapid weight loss, loss of about 35 pounds in a month. I still remember being at a New Year's Eve party. I realized that he was so tired that we actually left before midnight. We would never do that, ever. For several days, I had excruciating back pain. So came home, uh, went to the hospital, and they basically treated me as a, uh, as a cardiac patient. My wife had asked him to, to if he didn't mind, uh, performing a CAT scan on my abdomen. And that's when he came and told us that there was a large tumor on his pancreas, the head of his pancreas, and, uh, and that I was just overwhelmed and so was Kevin. Went through all the, the various treatments that were available for my type of cancer. So none of those uh, worked and uh, there wasn't anything available. I guess they nicknamed it the silent killer. It's there, but you don't know it's there until usually it's too late. I assumed that my dad and I would, he'd walk me down the aisle. He'd be able to be a grandpa to my kids. It's hard seeing the strongest person you know not be as strong anymore. Even if it's not affecting you directly, it's affecting someone that you may know. You might not even know it. And, and it's, it's frustrating that not there's not enough going on to help grow the awareness and, and fund the research. The overall survival of pancreatic cancer uh, remains quite dismal. So now there's about a 7 to 8 percent overall survival rate for all patients. For patients who can have surgery, which is about 20 percent of patients, then the five-year survival is about 15 or 20 percent. For the remainder, which is the majority, about 80 percent, uh, very few will survive five years, and most only survive about a year or a year and a half at the moment. In 2015, my mom went into the hospital on June 1st, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and she passed away three weeks later, still in the hospital. The main reason for this really extremely high mortality rate is late diagnosis. In that state, usually there's absolutely no uh, effective therapy available. It's been lots of efforts and huge uh, leaps forward. For example, in lung cancer, melanoma, that were also aggressive subtypes, um, we've seen an improvement, a vast improvement in longevity of life in these patients. And we're not seeing that yet in pancreatic cancer. I don't understand why he's leaving us. And it's very sad that we're going to have life without Kevin. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. It sucks the life out of you. But it still has to be fought. And I think there needs to be more research, uh, more funding, and more understanding. Basically, she said, you have another eight to 12 weeks of life left. So, uh, We'll, uh, we'll have to show them they're incorrect. I was really, really lucky to be part of this collaborative um, effort that Hebrew U um, has been doing with OICR and Princess Margaret and Stevens Group in, in Toronto. We have a uh, well-organized and terrific advocacy and fundraising group uh, in Canada called Pancreatic Cancer Canada, which is very much a national organization. Cancer research can not be done in a bubble. Nobody can just sit on their bench in a lab or just in the clinic and understand how the disease works or develop a therapy. The questions uh, are so big and complicated that we need a dedicated group of many, many disciplines. The work with the Israeli CFHU group 
was initiated about three or four years ago with a generous uh, donation from Sil Sylvia Soika and her family. It's a horrible thing to watch somebody you love die. My father was my father. And of course, it was very hard for me, but it's not the same thing as a young man who's 39 years old, who's probably just been married a few years, who's looking forward to the bulk of his life. So I decided that since I couldn't help my father, I really had to try to help somebody else. It really brought together a group of diverse researchers and clinicians that very nicely complement each other. The necessity to find synergy between all those researchers seemed to bring more to each individual project than they had been getting before. But we couldn't know at that point that it, the research was going to be so successful, and it has been. Steve Gallinger in Toronto really is a leading clinician, surgeon. He also does uh, amazing and exciting molecular analysis of tumors and using very advanced cutting edge technologies available in Toronto is able to obtain uh, very detailed molecular profiles of pancreatic cancers and in fact uh, his findings in the last couple of years changed our uh, perception of how the disease developed. We've made significant progress and uh, with the CFHU collaboration. There's been work on genetics. We understand a small subset of pancreatic cancer called BRCA or BRCA related cancer, which is actually more common in Israel because it's more common in Ashkenazi Jews. And that subset of pancreatic cancer has a unique biology and more, more interestingly has a unique uh, response to chemotherapy and targeted therapies. Through Dr. Gallinger and through Dr. Golan, we have the opportunity to look directly at the tumors of real patients. We can collect the samples, we can analyze exactly what are their mutation profiles. We can also keep these tumor cells alive in the lab. Since the program started, we were able to identify a set of projects and directions that really progressed in an amazing way. And I think much more rapidly and effectively than any of us imagined when we started. We can't do a lot of uh, drug testing obviously in humans, but when we have mouse models that recapitulate or mimic the disease, which they have uh, in the Hebrew University uh, group, then again we can accelerate understanding the disease and developing uh, drugs. Now that we understand a lot of the genetics and the epigenetics of the disease, we're hoping that we can rapidly accelerate the testing of these agents in subsets of patients. This kind of collaboration is really unique because it allows us to take information directly from the patients and into the cancer models and then apply our findings in the models back in the patients. So I think the challenge is real. About 50% of your patients are dying in weeks of being diagnosed. So you know, did you manage to get tissue from those patients to understand their tumor? Could you even expose them to any drugs to try and treat their tumors? Um, it's a really challenging clinical scenario. One important aspect of the program is the development of a new approach for early diagnosis of the disease by identifying pieces of DNA of genes from the tumors in the blood of patients such that we could take a blood sample from uh, patients and identify whether they carry the disease, what are the characteristics of the disease, and how advanced that is. We're extremely optimistic and confident that within the upcoming period we'll be able to provide really important insights about the, how the disease develops and really impact how patients are treated in the clinic. We already have seven publications that have come out of this project. The researchers themselves feel that this has been an unusual success and we need to find the money to continue it. And that's why we're here. And even though the situation today is quite bleak, I think there's absolutely no reason to doubt our ability to eventually reach a point where we can 
effectively treat and cure patients. I must say I don't even think about, you know, when is a change going to come? I don't think we have the ability to, to predict a thing like that. But it's going to come, you know, as long as we're working together and combine effort to make that possible, that's the important thing. We've tackled and solved a lot of the technical infrastructure, kind of engineering components doing the research by having large teams of pathologists and clinicians and basic scientists working together, we're much stronger now as a team than ever before as, as individual research groups. Most importantly is that technology is really, you know, one step ahead of us. We, we're seeing that in every, you know, in every aspect of our modern life. So it's just, you know, learning to utilize that technology to solve this problem. The one-size-fit-all philosophy has kind of gone by the wayside. There is no singular cure for cancer that anybody knows and unless there's a new paradigm shift we don't expect to be a cure for pancreatic cancer or any other cancer. It's going to be small little subsets and as we see these drugs coming out and as we have the infrastructure to test these drugs and to look at surgery in a different way uh, then I think we're going to make significant advances over the next uh, five to ten years. We've made immense gains in cancer types other than pancreatic cancer and it's time to do the same for pancreatic cancer too. I think it's really important to fund pancreatic cancer research because there just isn't much out there. I'm hoping that if it gets funded and gets funded well, there can be a cure. He's our hero and every single day he makes a memory for us. He's still out riding his motorcycle, cutting the lawn and tiling the sugar shack, anything, he just doesn't sit down. So the sugar shack had uh, actually turned out to be a labor of love with the family and friends. That was a bucket list item that I didn't really expect to have. And I think if you have a long bucket list, then you're not living. So look at what you want to do in life and what the impact is and do it. You hear about other cancers and, you know, the money that's being raised and all the people that are survivors. I just hope that down the road there will be a lot more pancreatic cancer survivors. Never been sick a day in my life and then you have this diagnosis, but once I had the surgery um, and had the pathology back, the tumor was localized. At that time, I thought I had a pretty good chance of surviving and beating this uh, very dreadful and draconian cancer. I really do see light of the tunnel, and yet you have to be hopeful, knowing the advances that we have made in other cancers. But you know what? I wear this thing on my, on my wrist, my road ID now, and what it says here, it says, every day is sunny. It just gives you a, a broader appreciation of the world around you. So for most people, the first thing they think is, why me? And I guess one of the advantages of having the BRCA gene is, I know why me. I was making arrangements, I was looking at burial plots and that kind of stuff. And I may have started by thinking, I'm not going to beat this, and then big surprise, well, Maybe I am. You look nervous. I, yeah. You don't have to be nervous. <laughs> okay. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine? Yeah. I want to see a day when many people in the audience will have stories just like mine. Thank you so much. I did what I could, and now I would really like other people to join me so that we too will pull together to support these researchers because that's the only way it's going to happen if everybody pulls together. I'm optimistic. I don't think I could, you know, treat patients uh, with pancreatic cancer if I wasn't optimistic. As we improve the uh, awareness of pancreatic cancer uh, throughout the country and internationally, uh, we know that uh, it's only through fundraising and research that we're going to continue to make the progress that we've made over the past few years, and we're thinking that we can accelerate this significantly. Everybody knows or will know pancreatic cancer patient. When you donate, you can make a big difference, even with a small contribution. It's just your contribution to, to, a, to a fight that a lot of us are, are, are doing. It'd be easy to, to give money um, in lieu of your body and soul. 
so please uh, you know, help out, help out you can. That's that's basically the message I, I'd like to to leave. I believe that when people come together with a passion and a determination, we can make anything happen.